what's going on guys welcome back to the ovens garage today i'm going to be showing you how to do the killer dowel pin on old blue so uh i don't know if the killer dowel pin has been done in this truck or not uh, i asked the previous owner but he was unsure so i figured this is the perfect time to walk through and show you that full process i've done it on the red truck uh, but that was before i started this youtube channel and before i started making videos um so unfortunately i didn't get that on video so today i'm going to show you that whole process, walk you through it. It's kind of a big job. Uh, if I remember right from the red truck, it took me about a full day. Um, so I'll show you, show you the parts here and then we'll get to work. Okay, so really not much to this job in terms of tools that you need. Uh, really most basic hand tools will work that you'll already have. I found that this was the most complete set of instructions. So if you just Google this, TST dowel pin, um, these are kind of the best instructions to go off. They do it on a second gen truck. Uh, this is the tab kit. I got this kit off of Amazon. I'll link in the description. You're going to, going to need RTV. And then there's, uh, while you're in there, it's also a good time to do your front main seal. There's two different main seal kits that you can, you can have. Um, what happened here was I bought the wrong one, uh, which includes the wear sleeve. So, um, if your seal is worn or groove into the crankshaft, you can put a wear sleeve on uh, while you replace your seal, or you can get the one without the wear sleeve. Um, so I'm going to install the one without the wear sleeve as long as it doesn't need it, and then return this guy. And then the other thing that you're going to need, um, if you don't use just RTV, is this gasket right here for the front main seal. And there's the part number right there from Cummins. So I got these all from my local Cummins supplier. And this one with the wear sleeve was actually pretty expensive. So um, I'm going to avoid using that one if I don't have to and return that. All right, I'm going to start by removing these fan shroud clips. There's two on the top and then two on the bottom. I'm going to attempt to remove the whole fan with the fan shroud together by removing just the, the fan uh, bracket that attaches right to the block. There's four bolts um, that just attach right to the block down in there. So the clips on the bottom uh, stay in place and you actually just pull the whole thing straight up out of the two uh, clips that are mounted there on the bottom. If you can see them, there's one and two. Now we can remove the accessory drive belt, take a half inch breaker bar, go into the tensioner pulley and push this way and then remove your drive belt. Now that the uh, drive belt is off, I can remove, there's four bolts holding the fan pulley on. Three of them you can access pretty easily and then one of them you can't even get out. Um, you have to use an open end wrench on it. And then uh, I'm gonna remove the whole fan and fan shroud as one assembly. All right, so I tried to remove the fan and the fan shroud without uh, draining the radiator, radiator, but it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, drain the rad a little bit so I can um, take the t upper rad hose off because the back of this um, with the fan just can't come up or down. Uh, so I got to drain a little bit of the rad first before I can pull that out. Okay, now that I've got the rad drained a bit, I just put that hose off to the side with a shop towel in each hole there uh, to prevent any dirt from going in there. And now I can remove this fan and shroud as one assembly. All right, now that I've got the fan and uh, fan shroud out of the way, I can remove the oil fill tube here. Uh, there's a 16 mil bolt that goes into the cylinder head and then an eight millimeter bracket here uh, to remove this bracket. And then this whole thing will twist left and pull out. All right, that was about a full 360 degree turn to remove that. Now I'm gonna take the crankshaft position sensor off. There's two 13 millimeter nuts uh, that stick out here. And then, and then uh, this wasn't on here, so the water pump must have been replaced at some point, but there's another um, tie down point there. So once that's removed, just uh, place the sensor off to the side. Okay, for this next piece, so we're gonna be removing the um, vibration damper. There's four 15 millimeter bolts that go into the crankshaft and you need a way to stop the crankshaft from rotating while you're taking the bolts off. So if you have a manual transmission, you can just throw it in gear. Um, but on automatic trucks like this, I'm gonna attempt to use a strap wrench just around the crankshaft. You can also use a engine barring tool if you have that. You can get it from Cummins, but it costs like 
60 or 70 bucks or something like that. Um, you can also use an impact to remove the bolts, but then you need a way to um, prevent the engine from rotating while you're tightening. So I'm going to try it with a strap wrench. If not, I can remove the inspection plate on the transmission and use a large uh, pry bar on the uh, ring gear uh, to prevent the engine from rotating. All right, I've got the inspection plate off here on the bottom of the truck. And because I'm by myself, I got a long pry bar and I wedged it into the ring gear on the flex plate and wedged um, my longest pry bar to the ground against the housing and the tooth. So as I loosen, it'll pry up against that, uh, the outside edge of the inspection plate opening and I can loosen those four bolts. All right, at this point we can use a 10 millimeter wrench to remove all of the timing cover bolts. Um, just take note, there's two different lengths of bolts as you go around, so keep note of where they go um, so that way you don't mess it up once you uh, put the bolts back in. There we go. Looks like we have not been tabbed. This truck's got 406,000 kilometers on it, and it really doesn't look like it's come out that much. Um, but I'll go ahead and try and tap that in more and see if it moves. But uh, that's good to see. All right, so this kit from Amazon is designed kind of cool. So um, there's two different uh, timing cover designs. One of them has a step in it. Um, like this one and you can actually flip this bolt around and use it both ways where it's flat uh, from the bolt hole to the killer dowel pin hole or there's a step in it. So what I mean by the step here is you can see the ridge uh, where the bolt is and then where the kitty pee comes up and in this case I'm going to be using uh, using it like this and then not only that but this is thick enough that if the bolt ever does back out it'll hit the timing cover before this whole thing falls um, in between your two gears there. So it's designed in such a way that if it ever does back out, it won't cause damage. All right, so I'm gonna place um, a drop of red thread lock on the new KDP. And then we'll get that threaded in there, uh, making sure to cover up the KDP hole uh, with this black tab. All right, so you can see there, um, I've got it positioned in the right spot, and now I can tighten this down to 18 foot-pounds, or if you have an inch-pound torque wrench, 216 inch-pounds. And while I've got the timing cover um, off, I'm going to check all five bolts. So if you look here where the arrows are pointed, that's where all five bolts are, including um, in addition to the killer dowel pin bolt. So there's two that are behind one of the the gears there so we'll have to borrow over the engine to get access to them through the hole of one of the gears otherwise the two on the bottom are outside of the case we'll check those make sure they're at 18 foot pounds and then the one here i'm going to put a uh, red loctite on and then we'll see if i can borrow over the engine take one of those each out at a time uh, clean them up and then put a drop of red loctite on retighten to 18 foot pounds all right there's one all right uh, i couldn't quite reach that fifth one um, I don't know if it was just kind of behind the gear too much up there, uh, but I rotated the gear around and I couldn't find the bolt. Um, so I'm just going to call it good. I tighten the rest of the bolts and put a drop of a red thread lock on each one. All right, so we're just down here at the crankshaft now. And if you can see, um, there's a little bit of a groove between those two um, rust lines there. Now if I take my fingernail, you can actually feel the groove into the crankshaft. So there's two things you can do. You can either wear or uh, use the wear sleeve and install the wear sleeve or install your new seal at a different depth in the timing cover. So I'm gonna attempt to make sure that it's not on the same line. So either go a little bit deeper 
or a little bit more shallow. So I'll probably go a little bit more deeper here to make sure that I'm on a clean, new, fresh surface so it does not leak. All right, so I went around the uh, timing cover on the engine side, cleaned up the mating surface as best as I could with a cloth and some parts cleaner, and I'll consider this side clean, and now we'll move on to the timing cover. So I've got the front timing case cover here um, on the workbench. I've cleaned up the back side, the front side, and now I'm gonna drive out the seal from the back um, to the front. I'll just use a hammer and a punch and then um, we'll clean up that surface and drive in the new seal. All right, so in the timing cover kit, the time cover seal kit without the wear sleeve, you've got the installation tool, and this goes in from the front side of the cover. So you just pop that in. That tool controls the depth of our seal when it's installed from the back. Then we've got our seal here. Um, it comes with this install tool. You want the yellow dust lip. There's two lips. There's a yellow dust lip that faces towards the front of the vehicle. And then the oil seal on the inside. If you pop this guy out, this installation tool is when you pop it onto the front of the crankshaft. So you want the yellow lip facing towards the front. Um, some of these come with and without uh, thread lock applied already on the exterior. If I grab Grab the other kit, I'll show you with the wear sleeve. This one comes without thread lock, so you'll need to apply some red thread lock as you install it so that way it seals it to the timing cover when it's installed. And there's what the uh, wear sleeve looks like. All right, and for good measure, I'm gonna put just a light coating of uh, red thread lock on the outside. All right, and you gotta be pretty careful as you're installing this tool um, not to damage the seal, obviously. So I'm gonna take a punch that's just barely wide enough um, not to damage the seal as I'm installing it. Um, I've also got this install tool that might work. It might be a bit too small though. Actually, that'll work. I'll try that out. Otherwise, otherwise I'm gonna use a small punch just on the very outer lip where the metal portion is and drive it in uh, flat. All right, and because I didn't want to install it to the same depth as the one that was on there before because of the groove that was in the crankshaft, um, I've installed it just barely, uh, probably about an eighth of an inch off of the install tool and making sure that's even around the entire uh, perimeter of the seal. Otherwise, if it's cockeyed at all, um, it might not create a good seal. So I'm going to check that depth uh, with the groove that's on the crankshaft, make sure it's not in the same spot. So I'm going to use this um, black RTV gasket maker, which is designed for maximum oil resistance. Um, I'm going to take my gasket that I got from Cummins here and put a little bit of, that R little bit of RTV on both sides, all the way around the gasket. And then I'll set it on the timing cover, and then I'll go and set it onto the truck. Um, just note I've got the installation tool back on here. I'll set it back onto the crankshaft, onto the truck. Um, finger tighten all bolts. According to the instructions here it says finger tighten all bolts until um, the RTV squeezes out a bit. Let it sit for an hour and then after that tighten down to your torque specs and let it sit for 24 hours um, before returning to service. All right, so I've put RTV on both sides of the gasket, and now I'm going to place it onto the clean backside of the timing cover, just like so. Now I'm going to take it out to the truck and finger tight all bolts on, and while I put each bolt on, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV onto each bolt and then finger tighten it onto the timing cover. All right, so I gotta install the uh, front main seal at the same time that I put this wet RTV on. I'm gonna take a bolt on the top right corner to kind of help me get it uh, situated in the right spot as I push it on. All right, I've got the front timing cover back on, all the bolts finger tight and I've had it set up for about an hour, so I'm gonna tighten it down to 
Tighten all the bolts down to 18 foot-pounds or 216 inch-pounds now. All right, now we can put the engine damper back on and tighten them down to uh, 92 foot-pounds. All right, now we gotta set the gap on the crankshaft position sensor. For first gens, it's 0 .050 inch. Just get a feeler gauge, put it in there, tighten it down, and we're done. All right, at this point I can uh, put the fan and fan shroud back in as an assembly. Um, I'll get that one bolt started that's the difficult one in the uh, bottom right corner, and then I'll get the other three started. These bolts get tightened down to 18 foot-pounds. I'll put my uh, fan, fan shroud back in place, and then I'll get my belt in place, and then I can put the uh, upper rad hose back in and fill it with coolant. Don't forget to put your inspection cover back on. Okay, so the last thing to do is check for leaks on the front main seal, as well as the timing cover, make sure there's no oil leaks, and then we'll be good to go. All right, that wraps up the KDEP job on uh, Old Blue. Thanks for watching, guys.